I, I just want to like start, uh, I guess, with uh, the, the Gaza conflict. And since that's been in the news, what exactly would the implications be for Ukraine? Is the attention just going to now completely ebb from Ukraine? Is it, um, it going to be a problem in terms of funding? We're already seeing some cracks uh, in terms of Republican support for funding Ukraine. Obviously, with the way that America is, there, there's still a kind of element of austerity involved where uh, if we fund one war, if we pay attention to one place, we're going to just necessarily pay less and less attention elsewhere. So maybe we could just start a little bit uh, with, with that aspect of things. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, the conflict in Gaza has a tremendous impact uh, on the war in Ukraine and on the future of this uh, conflict, which is, I think, would have major implications not only to Ukraine, but also to the European Union and to countries like the United States and the West in general and NATO in general because of what's going on in terms of the outcome of this conflict and the nature of this war. And I think uh, I can say, based on my own personal observations, uh, there was a big decline in uh, attention given to Ukraine, both by politicians, by the government officials in the West, in the United States, in Canada, in, U in the European Union, and also a lot of uh, significant decline of the media attention, which is, was very important for Zelensky personally, because he is... Uh, came from um, kind of entertainment industry. So for him, attention basically to be in the limelight, kind of to be the center attention, and to, again, to be on uh, all the, the media, kind of major uh, media outlets, giving television interviews and so on. So he, this is, was kind of his uh, time, kind of, and his, uh, kind of, uh, I think, uh, well, I think what he could, considered to be his uh, kind of uh, life dream, basically, and fulfillment to, to achieve such status. And now uh, he is basically is replaced by events in Gaza and in, again in Israel, which I think uh, started very important um, conflict itself with a lot of implications also to how Ukraine war is perceived outside of Ukraine. Because uh, media attention obviously is declining since uh, in the United States, Israel is traditionally is much more important in terms of history and in terms of connections compared to Ukraine. And so this is one of the reasons why there was such decline. But I think another reason was uh, kind of much, how to say, um, much more significant uh, human rights relations and what's going on in terms of destruction taking place in in, in Gaza in, in, and also uh, killings of, by Hamas uh, of Israelis, uh, civilians and so on at the start of the conflict, which uh, had, again, very significant impact in terms of, again, human rights relations and and, and actually which I think eclipse what was going on in terms of the uh, civilian casualties in Ukraine because now Again, I'm not expert in in in, in, in Gaza and Palestine and Israel, but according to various media reports, again uh, cited by uh, New York, uh, kind of United uh, Nations sources, I think uh, which are regarded as uh, maybe uh, kind of uh, cited very widely. Actually, now number of civilian casualties is much uh, now in 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 just in Gaza exceeded a number of civilian casualties in the entire in the entire war in in Ukraine uh, for again which was very significant especially children and so on and, and I think this is a very significant impact how this was perceived uh, not only uh, again in uh, in Ukraine itself because in Ukraine there was not much coverage of this conflict but I think it was a very significant impact on how Ukraine uh, war is perceived outside of Ukraine, specifically in the Western countries, in the United States, which were which provided much uh, funding for Ukraine, but also European Union and also countries of the South and, and uh, Middle East, which which uh, countries like Saudi Arabia and other countries, which were uh, I think uh, in Asia and Latin America, which were I think crucial to kind of to this conflict because uh, Western countries try to uh, kind of. Uh, sway their public opinion and their governments in favor of supporting Ukraine, but now I think it will be much more difficult, and this is now recognized universally, that this will be much more difficult to kind of uh, to provide funding to uh, the Ukrainian government, military uh, uh, funding, uh, military support, including weapons to, to, the, to Ukraine because of the conflict in, uh, in Gaza and implications of this conflict. Yeah, and just to uh, emphasize uh, some of what you said, when it comes to civilian casualties in, in Gaza, it's now uh, well over 11,000. Um, well, most of those, rather, are civilian casualties. I think 
Uh, the estimated number of Hamas militants is uh, something like well under a thousand. I mean, that could change, but if 75% of the casualties thus far are uh, children and women, right? It stands to reason that the other 25% of adult males, probably most of them are not Hamas f f fighters uh, either, right? They're just part of the indiscriminate shelling. In terms of like rate uh, of casualties versus Ukraine, so we have a still under 10,000 uh, civilian casualties in Ukraine, and here it's over 11,000. So we're talking about a pace of something like almost uh, 20 to 25 times uh, faster in terms of death rate. And obviously the child death rate in Ukraine is well under a thousand and uh, you know a substantial chunk so far of the confirmed deaths are, are, are children in Gaza as well as under the rubble, right? Which are not counted yet as deaths, but most likely will be deaths. Um, that brings it up to closer to like somewhere between a third and half. And uh, it's an interesting observation that you made about in terms of like what the U.S. sees as its geo, you know, strategic uh, interest in the sense that, you know, we had Obama, who was a very mainstream figure, a popular figure. And one of his reasons for not arming Ukraine to the same level that Trump and Biden did was, you know what, like, you know, we might want Ukraine on our side, but it's not really our core geopolitical interest, even in that region. Uh, so we need to sort of like let it go, not get really involved with Russia, right? This is kind of like, you know, in their sphere of influence is uh, the way that maybe that he would put it. When it comes to something like Israel, right, moving away from Israel is still very costly for American politicians. Uh, you know, in the end, who knows how, how that's going to play out. But, you know, it, it's worth thinking about. Uh, in your estimation, do you think that Ukraine is being forced to play these like little like geopolitical games that maybe is going to come back to haunt them? Because like one thing I did notice last year was uh, Zelensky, he went on social media, he went on Twitter, and he publicly congratulated Netanyahu on his election last year. And he said it in some terms like, oh, you know, um, uh, Netanyahu shows us exactly how democracy looks like. This is real democracy. And I mean, th this this would make Zelensky look very clownish because, I mean, nobody liked really Netanyahu even then, especially not now. Uh, there's now this, you know, kind of a thing going on with Russia where Russia is taking a more pro-Palestine position, not just nominally, but also just actively in some of the things that it's doing. It's uh, seen Hamas leaders uh, by Putin several times already. And, uh, you yeah, know, th there's always this possibility of things going haywire. Like, is Ukraine being sort of forced to take sides in something that um, maybe can't really find a way to negotiate it itself out of in the future? I think uh, your observation about Obama policy towards Ukraine in 2014, I think, is very important and, uh, and uh, I think very relevant to the current um, war kind of, and, and U.S. policy towards Ukraine and support for, for the current Ukrainian government of Zelensky. Because when uh, when this conflict started in 2014 in Ukraine and uh, Russia intervened and like Crimea and and uh, supported separatists in Donbass. So uh, again, it was a very dangerous development then, but um, uh, there was no war between Russia and Ukraine, even so there was a significant possibility of such war taking place. And specifically, uh, one issue why this did not happen is because the Obama administration told uh, uh, then uh, Maidan leaders who came to power in Ukraine after the violent overthrow of the Yanukovych government, uh, they specifically told them not to uh, resist Russia, Russian annexation of Crimea. By 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 military means, and this is why there was kind of um, basically mostly peaceful. Uh, just uh, I think two people were killed during this um, uh, kind of annexation of Crimea, which was pro-Russian in terms of its attitudes and supported uh, joining Russia for a long time in the 1990s and and especially after the Maidan. But I think uh, I and for this reason again it was a very dangerous situation, and I, I um, uh, warned about possibility, a real possibility of war between Russia and Ukraine, especially in the months coming for, before the Russian invasion, because I expected this. Uh, could happen even so many people I think most people do not believe this would be the case but um, when the war started I think I, I expected that this uh, again that Zelensky and, uh, would basically continue Poroshenko policy to make a deal with Russia to stop this war because again uh, Ukraine would not be able to defeat Russia militarily it was quite obvious for a very significant time even with western weapons with western support but um I think it was very kind of difficult to predict for me, for me that uh, Western countries would resort to 
kind of proxy war, basically kind of uh, blocking peace deal and uh, in Ukraine and uh, and uh, forcing or kind of making or pushing Zelensky into accepting this uh, proxy war, which again for the West is also very defeating because uh, Russia, for Russia, this is a much more significant conflict compared to the United States and Russia has made the advantage and this has now become obvious that uh, that uh, proxy war, I think, would be not in the interest of Ukraine. And for this reason, again, a policy of Ukraine, including foreign policy, uh, now to a large extent is dictated by, by its total dependence on the West. That's why uh, Ukraine basically uh, supported all the resolutions of the voting in the United Nations almost in all cases along, along uh, with the United States um, uh, concerning, I think there was last resolution concerning, um, I think, uh, uh, concerning, uh, I think, West Bank or something, or kind of Israel, in which Ukrainian delegation voted uh, with majority of other countries, but in previous resolutions, it, it voted along with the United States, even so there was very few countries supporting such uh, such resolutions concerning Israel. So and Zelensky made an explicit decision to support Israel in this conflict, and he wanted even to visit um, uh, Israel. And initially, Israeli government told him that this is not the time for the visit. And um, uh, later, just um, few, few, I think, a few days ago, there was an uh, announcement that Zelensky was planning to visit uh, Israel, um, but uh, kind of um, he had to cancel his visit because of a media leak. So he wanted to to make this visit like a, a public event, kind of to show support and unexpected again to be again in the limelight. But uh, media, Israeli media reported this in advance, and for this reason, he cancelled this visit to Israel, which again shows uh, kind of open policy of supporting uh, Israel in this conflict, um, kind of without any uh, kind of any objections or any kind of reservations, and also and following the United States policy in this regard, and also uh, Zelensky still says that he wants to visit Israel, and he might uh, do this specifically to offer support, um, kind of to Israeli um, kind of policy into the Israeli government and uh, relations between him and Netanyahu was not quite, uh, how to say, oh, kind of quite, um, how to say, uh, uh, fond, or how to say, uh, quite friendly for a long time, because mm -hmm. Israel, after the start of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, it uh, tried to be uh, kind of more neutral. It uh, refused to provide military support to Ukraine in contrast to the Western countries, because it wanted to, to again, to preserve relations with Russia, specifically in, in terms of Syria, kind of unavoid confrontations with Russia in Syria, because Russia has uh, anti-aircraft kind of weapons uh, systems in Syria, which can be used again uh, uh, against Russian military planes, uh, bombing uh, Syria, kind of um, uh, various um, kind of installations, various places in our kind of uh, uh, locations and so on in Syria. And for this reason, uh, kind of uh, Israel did not want to kind of um, kind of uh, explicitly support uh, Ukraine in this conflict. And uh, Zelensky now tried to basically sway Israel in uh, in supporting Ukraine, providing military weapons. But uh, this will be again very difficult for Israel to do because of the conflict. So they will not provide any of this Iron Dome or anti uh, kind of anti aircraft. Uh, missile system, which is again uh, would not be also very useful in case of Ukraine because uh, of uh, types of, um, of weapons are used uh, by Russia, which much more advanced compared to, to this uh, Palestinian uh, kind of missiles, which are unguided and quite uh, kind of and, uh, quite short range and so on. And again, and uh, Zelensky also explicitly said that he wanted to make Ukraine like a new Israel. Basically, uh, kind of um, state which will be supported by the West for a very long time, and would be, and would be basically uh, again for a very long time conflict between uh, like between Israel and uh, Arab states and Palestine. So he wanted to do the same basically for Ukraine to make uh, Ukraine a kind of um, Western bulwark against Russia, kind of uh, for a very long time. And so this is like his explicit policy. And he, when he says democracy again, uh, I think Israel. Is um, is again. I'm not expert in Israel, but uh, is Israel you have multi-party system elections and so on. In case of Ukraine, uh, uh, Zelensky ban all opposition, um, major basically major all I think all major opposition parties, with the exception of uh, of parties on the uh, far right and, and with the exception of um, the Poroshenko party and parties which are more nationalist, nationalistic parties. And he again um, ban all the opposition. Television channels, including the Poroshenko television channel and so on, 
and left only one state basically run a television marathon, which only gives Ukrainian news, which are approved by the government of Zelensky. So this is actually not a real kind of democracy. So actually, Ukraine is not democratic in this regard. And, and as I mentioned, this is based on my research. So there is no democracy in Ukraine. Ukraine is largely undemocratic, and Zelensky is not a democrat. He is uh, basically trying to, to uh, kind of create his uh, undemocratic rule and, and to hold power in Ukraine, especially because um, of uh, forthcoming elections, which were supposed to be held in the next uh, March, uh, next presidential elections, and Zelensky just decided that this is not the time for elections. So he, basically, he makes his own decision, kind of whether to hold elections to replace himself. So this is like a uh, who, uh, can, how can uh, anybody call this democracy? And there are like people, even some academics who say this is like uh, Ukrainian democracy and so on. And for me, this is like a very, this is quite unbelievable because you have major human rights violations, you have opposition opposition parties, uh, one, you have political prisoners, you have um, just state media basically control the television um, programs, and, so, and this is quite unbelievable. Now there are no even elections to be held, and this is considered to be democracy, and I think this is purely political kind of uh, misrepresentation, which is, I think, also affected uh, this uh, war in Ukraine to a large extent, because of propaganda, because open propaganda.